you will hear a number of different recordings, and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. Write all your answers in a listening question booklet. At the end of the test, you will be given ten minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Section one. In the first part of section one, you will hear a weather forecast in London and the southeast coast of England. As you listen, fill in the table. Now you will have some time to look at questions one to four. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to four. And now here is Colin with details of the weather. Thank you, Francis. Here is the weather forecast for the next 24 hours for London and the southeast coast of England. In the morning, it will be mainly dry with a light mist, with temperatures around eight to ten degrees Celsius. Later in the afternoon, there will be a few scattered showers. By midnight, it will become cloudy in most areas. And there will be heavy rain with winds becoming strong and reaching gale force along the coast. The temperature will drop to four to five degrees. The belt of low pressure is expected to move away in the early morning. The whole day tomorrow it will be bright and warm in most areas, with temperatures eleven to fourteen degrees, slightly above normal for this time of the year. Coastal areas will be warmer, and you can expect a fair amount of sunshine. This will be better weather news for holidaymakers. And that's all from me. Now back to Francis with more news. You are going to listen to the second part of section one. Betty wants to drive to see her friend. Now she is listening to the radio, traffic information. As you listen, look at the notes and tick if the information is correct, or write in the necessary changes. Now look at questions five to seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions five to seven. This is KSU Radio. It's Friday, May the fourth, seven thirty in the morning. This is traffic information. Here is a message for all motorists. Most major roads leading in and out of London are congested. Motorists should use alternative routes wherever possible. Here is the local traffic news. Heavy rain during the night has flooded parts of the South Circular Road. An articulated lorry has broken down on the M2. The traffic is now only two lanes and moving very slowly. Strong winds during the night have blown down a number of trees on the M5, and many sections are not in use. That is the end of local traffic news. For more news, listen again at eight o'clock. That is the end of section one. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. In this section, first you are going to hear a dialogue in which a Camford student answers the questions of a young girl who is thinking of applying to go there. As you listen to the dialogue, circle the correct answer and fill in the table. Now you will have some time to look at questions eight to sixteen. Now listen to the dialogue and answer questions eight to sixteen. You're a student of the University of Camford, aren't you? Yes, I am. 
I'd like to apply to go to this university. Could you tell me something about it? Certainly. What would you like to know? Well, um, for a start, what's the campus like? It's large. It's spread out, and it mainly consists of medieval colleges. But it's in the middle of a large manufacturing town, so there's a lot of traffic. And what about the student accommodation? It's mainly in colleges on the campus. Is it? And how do you find the rooms? They're old and quite charming, but they're expensive and badly heated. How about the study facilities? Very good. In the main building, there are 30 study rooms accommodating 20 students in each, and four large lecture rooms, all are air-conditioned. Each lecture room is equipped with film and slide projectors and screen, a closed-circuit TV and tape recorder wired to central speakers, and an overhead projector. Each study room is too equipped with a closed-circuit TV and overhead projector. And the computer centre, what's it like? Oh, it's well equipped. There are 60 computers in the centre. They are all available for student use. The computers are in constant demand, so you need to book in advance. You can reserve a computer for three hours at a time. If you need to print anything, you may use one of the six laser printers. There's always someone in the centre for advice, or in case something goes wrong. Hmm. And how about the laboratories? They are large. They're quite modern, and they're well equipped. I see. And the libraries? Can you tell me what the libraries are like? Well, they're generally well stocked, and there's a lot of historical manuscripts, science, social sciences, and arts books. But the sitting accommodation is limited. How about the health centre? It's not very big, but well staffed. There are medical and dental units. You can always have immediate attention. And the cultural facilities? There is a small university theatre and two art galleries. Thank you so much for the information. Now listen to the second part of this section. The young girl, Debbie Milan, applied to go to the University of Camford. She has been accepted by the university. You will hear the conversation between the chairman of the International Society and the newly arrived student. As you listen to the conversation, fill in the gaps numbered 17 to 20. Now you will have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 17 to 20. Hello there. What are you studying? Computing science. Oh yes, and how long is the course for? One year. It's a postgraduate diploma. What would you like to do at the end of it? Have you made your mind up?、Mm, yes, I'd like to be a teacher in a university in my country. Would you? That sounds interesting. Tell me, though, why have you chosen this university? It's got a good reputation in the field of computing science. Where do you come from? Sri Lanka. Oh. That's a country I've always wanted to go to. You are Miss Malau, aren't you? I've got your name on my list here. Yes, Debbie Malau. Would you like to give the students a talk about your country? Yes, I'd like to very much. Debbie Malau is presenting her paper about her country, Sri Lanka, at the seminar. As you listen to the presentation, complete the notes. Now you will have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-seven. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm going to talk about my country, Sri Lanka. It is an island with an area of 25,332 square miles, and a population of 12,510,000 people. It is just smaller in area than Scotland. The island of Sri Lanka lies off the southeast coast of India, and is separated from the mainland by the Polk Strait. People who live there sometimes call it by an old name, which means Golden Island. Sri Lanka is considered to be one of the most beautiful countries in the world. What is the climate like there? It is totally different from the climate in Britain. 
Britain has a temperature climate. As Sri Lanka lies not very far north of the equator, the climate of the island is tropical. It is hot all the year round. Heavy rains fall during the monsoon season, making the climate hot and humid. Consequently, vegetation grows dense and thick, and the jungle is so impenetrable in parts of the island that it is difficult to proceed without cutting a path with a machete, a large, heavy knife with a broad blade. Although the main centres of population are in the flat, fertile coastal regions, many people live in the mountainous country inland. This area contains mountain peaks such as Adams Peak and Mount Pedro. They are twice as high as any mountains in Britain, but in spite of the mountains and rough terrain, the communications are good, and it is easy to travel around the island by road and rail. There are four airports, the main one being in Bandaranaik, situated 34 kilometers, 21 miles north of Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka. Okay, I'll leave some time to you to ask me questions. Are there any questions? What about the natural resources that you have in Sri Lanka? Sri Lanka is rich in natural resources. The main natural resources are rubber, tea, and coconuts, and they are on the island's most important exports. Rubber is produced in the tropical forests, and tea is harvested on the slopes of the inland hills. Coconuts grow in abundance. The sea is rich with fish, which the people catch in small boats with large three-cornered sails. What sort of food is grown in your country? In Sri Lanka, rice is grown for local consumption. We eat rice because the main diet is rice and fish. But we also have potatoes, vegetables, and almost all the items you have here. What about the animals? Do you have any special animals in Sri Lanka? Yes, deep in the forest there are many wild animals such as elephants, leopards, crocodiles, monkeys, snakes, and a strange animal called a giant monitor, a kind of lizard over two meters, six feet long, which has strong claws and can climb trees. There are also many rare birds which are hardly seen anywhere else on Earth. Well, if you are interested in Sri Lanka and still have questions. You may ask me at any time after the seminar presentation. Thank you. That is the end of section two. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section three. Section three. In this section, you will hear a conversation between Pat and Martin. They are students of a university and haven't seen each other for some time. They have met in a cafeteria at lunchtime. As you listen to their conversation, answer questions twenty-eight to thirty-four. Now you will have some time to look at questions twenty-eight to thirty-four. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions twenty-eight to thirty-four. Hi there, Pat. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Martin. I haven't seen you for a long time. What have you been up to? Oh, studying. It seems that university life is much more time-consuming than I originally thought. I even don't have time to read newspapers. Really? You're so busy. You know, I read an article in yesterday's newspaper. It's very interesting. What's it about? It's about post office cats. They're mouse hunters. That really sounds interesting. Could you tell me something about the story now? Yes, certainly. The post office has actually employed cats since 1868. 
That means that they have been on the official payroll of, of the post office for more than a hundred years. The loyal public servants appear on the official payroll as rodent operative, but we would more easily recognise them under the title post office cat. They are not employed to sort or deliver mail, of course, but to protect the mail and keep the rodent population under control. What do you mean? They're mouse hunters. They make sure your morning post arrives nibble free. You know, they work unsocial hours while we sleep. They hardly ever get a Christmas bonus in their pay packets and can't bargain for better conditions. The average rate of pay is no more than a few pounds a month, just enough to pay for their food. But they are allowed to eat all the mice they can catch. How come the post office had the idea to employ cats? Usually, the public had to queue inside post offices for their mail. The whole idea of the post office employing cats to control the rodent population goes back to the days prior to 1867, as a part of the jubilee celebrations of Queen Victoria. It was decided that there would be a house-to-house -house delivery of letters by postmen. As a result, there was a huge accumulation of letters and parcels at post offices. Vast numbers of rats and mice began to hide amongst the mail and nibbled at letters and parcels. Yes, I see. They caused great damage to the mail. That's right. So, in 1868, the post office authorities decided to employ cats to keep the rodent population under control. Most of the cats they employed were females. Why was that? Because it was thought that females were better and more persistent hunters than the males. If the number of mice in a post office did not decline greatly after six months, then these cats were to be dismissed from their place of work. London post offices were the first to try out the experiment. Within a few months, the rodent population had shrunk dramatically. Other post offices all over the country were soon using cats in the war against rats and mice. Within ten years, the pay of the cats was improved from one and a half old pence a day to a six or nine pence a day. Now the average rate of pay is about a few pounds a month. So some of the hard-working cats have become quite famous. Have you heard of the cat named Lucky? No. Tell me the story about her, please. Okay, Lucky became the most distinguished of all the cats. In 1980, she foiled an attempted robbery in a Worcestershire post office, and she did so all on her own. How did she do it? As the two burglars made their way in through the window, Lucky flew at them. She sank her claws into the back of one of the men and into the neck of the other. Oh, I see. This was a surprise attack. Yeah, this surprise attack was too much for the men, and they fled empty-handed. For this heroic behaviour, Lucky was awarded the first ever post office DFC certificate, that is the Distinguished Feline Conduct Certificate. Another excellent mouse was Jerry of Earl's Court Post Office in London. He served the building for 16 years and was on duty for 24 hours every day. He drove all the mice away from the premises. How about today? Does the post office still employ cats as mouse hunters? Well, there are fewer cats employed by the post office than at any time in the past. Their profession is yet another example of a profession laid low by the advances of new technology. With the faster movement of the mail and more hygienic surroundings, post office cats are not always needed to keep down the rodent population. But many post officers still employ them, and they become great friends with the postmen, who often feed them. When one cat suffered an accident at work, it was taken promptly to the vet in a nearby city to receive the best attention, and the post office willingly footed the bill. According to the post office, there is no plan for their services to be discontinued in the foreseeable future. This is a really fascinating story. Thank you very much. That is the end of section three. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. In section four, you will hear a lecture about Esperanto. 
As you listen to the lecture, answer questions 35 to 42. Now you will have some time to look at questions 35 to 42. Now listen to the lecture and answer questions 35 to 42. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our lecture. It's a good pleasure for me to welcome Professor Nesbitt of the University of Edinburgh. He is going to give us a lecture about a world language. Professor Nesbitt, please. Today I'm going to talk about languages, or more especially about a world language. What would the world be like if everyone spoke the same language? Would we understand each other better and be more sympathetic to each other's causes? I'm not talking about everyone sharing the same first language, but sharing the same second language. And I'm not talking about English, but Esperanto. That's spelled E-S-P-E-R-A-N-T-O. This is an artificial language. What are the facts about Esperanto? Well, it was invented in 1887 by Dr. Ludwig Zasarus Zamelhof, a Polish philologist. The vocabulary comes mainly from Western European languages, and the grammar is similar to Slavic languages. It sounds like Italian. Esperanto means hopeful, and it was Zamelhof's hope that a common language would promote a friendship and an understanding amongst all people of the world. His inspiration is summed up by the Esperanto term interno indio, which means central idea, and it is an idea of human peace and justice. I think Esperanto will become the world language in the future. Esperanto is taught in many schools in Yugoslavia and Hungary. China is very interested. About 400,000 people have learnt Esperanto in China, it is spoken all over the world by approximately 10 million people and there are many who would like Esperanto to be the official second language of the world. It has such internal logic that it could become the international computer language. From the learner's point of view, it has the advantage that there are no exceptions to rules. The advantages of the world being able to talk freely to each other about business, politics, culture sport, hobbies, well, are obvious. The costs of translation at any international conference are staggering. About 55% of the EEC's budget in Strasbourg is taken up by translation costs. The main advantage, as I see, is that Esperanto is a neutral language. It doesn't have the national, political and cultural bias that all others, of course, have. If everybody has to learn a second language, then everybody is equal. Well, I'll stop here for questions. Excuse me, I'd like to ask a question. Why should people have to learn another language? Why not English as the world language? I mean, there are already so many people who speak English throughout the world. I think English is one of those languages which for many seems easy at the beginning but then the bridge between basic knowledge and mastery takes a long time to cross, and many people give up. Why should people have to learn English? For many, it's a waste of time of spelling, of the large number of exceptions to any rule. It is very idiomatic, and the prepositions are terrible. On the contrary, Esperanto is a very easy language to learn. The tense system has none of the complications of English, and the grammar is based on just 16 rules which have no exceptions. There are five vowel sounds in Esperanto, but 20 vowel sounds in English. The most remarkable thing is that after a very short time, the learners find that they can express quite sophisticated ideas, the same sort of things that they would want to say in their own language. Professor Nesbitt, thank you very much. That is the end of section four. Now you will have half a minute to check your answers.
important extremely important for those students who want to improve their writing and uh, because i'm gonna explain i'm gonna uh, uh, tell you the secret of uh, writing more than seven band task one so if you have problem uh, writing task one so uh, i'm gonna help you out today this lesson of mine would certainly be very very helpful and beneficial for you people so let's get started so as you can see this is a, a write a report for a university lecturer describing the information below and you should write at least 150 word so no less than 150 please and spend 20 minutes mean not more than 20 minutes so this is your time limit and uh, as i always advise my student uh, to understand your uh, graph understand uh, your maybe pie chart line graph bar graph it may be maps process and diagram before you start writing so uh, let me help you out how you can understand your graph uh, you can see over here like uh, it's a vertical and we say it uh, you know y axis so this is number i have written earlier number of people in k mean in thousand and uh, here the information you can say it's uh, it means years from 1970 to 1990 this is called you know horizontal or you can also say it uh, uh, x axis and here you can see mean three fast food over here mean pizza fish and chips and hamburgers so i have written over here like uh, for pizza i mean it's triangle you can see over here like in triangle and a hamburger you can see a little bit lighter and uh, in a diamond diamond like uh, a symbol of diamond over here and uh, fish and chips are a little bit darker and this is in square like here you can see like the, these are called square so uh, uh, before uh, i start writing so i have understood like uh, there are I mean two trend over here like and uh, we have to take care about biggest change or the highest changes or the most important or the most significant changes so as you can see like over here i think uh, the pizza i mean in the beginning you know in 1970 uh, the highest uh, uh, amount of pizza was eaten uh, it was over 300 uh, thousand people I mean tried it you or you can see over here uh, but uh, we can see like comparison over here I mean uh, for fish and chips and hamburger it was I mean uh, I mean uh, fewer than 100 a thousand people you can see over here and this is less than fewer than you know 50k uh, people tried this one so this is a very important information so uh, i have understood it and you can see like uh, in the beginning uh, pizza was eaten uh, by over 300k people but by the end of uh, the period I mean in 1990 uh, you can see like uh, it's a, a trend is uh, you know uh, decreasing trend and for uh, both fish and chips and hamburger the trend you can see is upward trend or encouraging trend here you can see like because it started in the beginning uh, at the lowest level and then they uh, go up to the highest one you can see over here a peak of uh, around five uh, hundred thousand people and here again so yes so let me uh, uh, start please uh, because i have understood it and uh, now it is easy for me to write uh, uh, task one to write this uh, line graph so uh, yes here you can see uh, the line graph i have written it for you and uh, it would be really really helpful for you so first of all you can see I mean, write a report for a US uh, university lecturers describing the information below so information is about fast food over here as you can see like uh, uh, pizza fish and chips and hamburger so uh, in the beginning I mean uh, uh, I have to write introduction and I have to be very careful I mean in introduction I have to just rephrase uh, the statement to so rephrase the statement so i mean i uh, have to use I mean i will use uh, different words but meaning will remain the same the similar i mean i'm gonna uh, i'm not gonna change the meaning at all so here you can see like uh, i have written in my introduction uh, you know the line graph here is you can see line graph so there is no change over here uh, but uh, here compares the data i mean this is comparison between uh, the data 
so compare the data of three fast food three fast food here you can see hamburger fish and chips and uh, pizza so uh, the line graph compare the data of three fast food eaten in the usa from 1970 to 1990 so this is my introduction this is very effective introduction and uh, don't try to change the main information and that is you know this is line graph so don't try to change it uh, line graph or something when I mean, you can't change line graph uh, you can't replace it into anything else so don't try to uh, you know uh, don't try to change the information uh, given over here I mean we have to stick to the information uh, given in uh, the task one right so and now uh, i uh, will write you know overview for that i i think uh, uh, it is clear for you like uh, and don't uh, you know panic if uh, your image is a little bit complicated or uh, it unfamiliar with you uh, please practice uh, i think uh, like this as i've told you you can see like uh, uh, one change uh, uh, in uh, uh, you know this is hamburger so from here to from here this is one change and then fine so here and then here and then a main change over in, uh, in if you talk about like uh, uh, fish and chips so from here to here one and the second one you can see it's a dramatic increase or it rotated right and here you can see a uh, change from here to here and uh, it mean uh, like uh, decrease significantly from uh, uh, 300,000 people to around 200,000 people and uh, one more change uh, this is over here I mean it was it, it remained you know more or less the same or hovering around you can say I mean hovering around uh, 200,000 K people I mean tried it over here so I hope you got it so see uh, how I have written uh, you know uh, overview so uh, in while writing overview you can see I mean I have uh, used the word overall it's very nice word you can start and the highest amount of pizza was eaten in the beginning as you can see over here I mean in the beginning so you can see in the highest amount uh, highest amount of pizza was eaten in the beginning as compared to hamburger and fish and chips whereas the letter the letter it means I mean uh, uh, I mean uh, I am talking about uh, 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 this one it means I mean hamburger and fish and chips showed the upward trend overtaking the pizza you can see over here I mean overtaking this mean we can say like exceeding the data or over overtaking you can say or uh, you can also use the word you know outnumbered or cross so you you must have you know good vocabulary sound vocabulary so that you can uh, write you know effectively you can use your different kind of vocabulary different different kind of words synonymous word effectively and to make your writing task one or writing effective writing so let's see over here so i think you got it I mean uh, in first paragraph i'm gonna uh, write about you know uh, the changes in you know pizzas and uh, the second paragraph i will write about in, in detail about uh, uh, hamburger and fish and chips the changes in hamburger and fish and chips so it uh, i have made i think uh, it uh, simplified it's very simple uh, so uh, let's get started uh, in, this is my paragraph one I mean, in 1970 the most popular fast food was pizza because over 300k americans tried it compared to the fish and chips and the hamburger which was eaten by fewer than 100k and 50k respectively I mean 50k people respectively as you can see over here in this right I mean yes I mean 1970 this is 1970 this is the most popular I mean I use the word different or different over here uh, in the beginning I wrote I mean highest amount of pizza was eaten so the most popular fast food was pizza uh, because over 300k you can see over here 300k so uh, American tried it compared to fish and chips I mean I have made comparison over here which is very nice and uh, I written I have written the three things you should uh, mention I think one this one and then uh, about this one I mean the sort of changes 
and then talk about uh, year in 1970 to 1990 you can say two decades as well it's a time of two decades okay period of two decades fine so uh, and and the uh, that that was my first in a uh, uh, first uh, paragraph first sentence and now the amount decreased significantly from 300k to 200k by 1980 over, over here you can see by 1980 so here from 300k to 200k right by 1980 here you can see by 1980 uh, remaining more or less the same between 1980 and 1990 yes you can see over here more or less the same so it's very nice remaining more or less the same mean there is no big change over here so I've written over here so this is very nice uh, way to write uh, your uh, first BP BP1 I mean paragraph beginning of paragraph 1 or how to write you know task uh, paragraph 1 in detail so it's very nice and now uh, let me start uh, uh, in, in, in contrast you can see over here a big contrast huge contrast uh, you know so I have started like meanwhile so it's a very nice word if we have to write something in contrast or contrary I mean on the contrary or meanwhile it's nice word the trend for hamburgers and fish and chips was substantially different you can see so you can see even substantially mean lot of difference over here so I have written like this uh, uh, the smallest number of American people consumed hamburger in 1970 as you can see in 1970 you can see even smallest number of yes smallest number of so very nice to start it uh, I mean uh, here you can see uh, the smallest number of American people consumed hamburger in 1970 however it showed a double increase of over 100k till 1985 here you can see uh, yes this one is uh, I mean 100k uh, less than 100 and uh, it became like uh, uh, just what it was about sorry uh, yes I was talking about this one so uh, consumed uh, I mean uh, I mean uh, yeah, smallest number of American people consumed hamburger in 1970 however it showed a double increase of over 100k till 1985 yes you can see over here yes it's 1985 here here you can see so over 100k yes so I have written this one from change from here 1970 to 1985 so it's very nice followed by a sharp, uh, sharp upsurge by the end of 1980s so here you can see sharp upsurge so upsurge it means increase I have used the synonyms word uh, uh, mean followed by a sharp upsurge uh, in uh, in the uh, like what I have written over here uh, observed by the end of 1980s uh, so by the end of 1980s you can say 1980s or end it means it means uh, 1987 88 or 1990 so it's a very nice word I mean I have rephrased it I mean I have used different word for the synonyms for the same meaning and now uh, uh, about like uh, likewise it means mean the uh, mean the same thing i'm talking about uh, likewise the consumption of chips and fish here you can see i mean consumption of fish and chips so uh, was uh, insignificant as fewer than uh, 100k people uh, ate eight here you can see ate it in uh, uh, 1970 so here you can see mean uh, less than 100 mean fewer than 100 sorry yes I mean not less you can't use less uh, fewer it mean because it's number so for number we use you know fewer fewer sorry uh, I mean uh, fewer number of people I mean uh, fewer uh, than 100 uh, K I mean 100,000 people ate it in uh, 1970 afterward I have used the word afterward it depicted a gradual hike of 150 K in the upcoming decade so here you can say uh, yes it's around 150k I mean from here to here it's one I mean upsurge you can see over here so I have written depicted uh, depicted means showed a gradual gradual mean slow hike it means again increase of 150k in the upcoming decade upcoming mean uh, the coming decade decade mean 10 year of time and surprisingly in the late 1980s when you can see over here late 1980 I mean from here to here so late 1980 the proportion of fish and chips 
picked around 500 k here you can see yes picked around 500 k exceeding the pizza exceeding you can say over here uh, here here you can say I mean exceeding exceeding the pizza I mean this is for pizza so exceeding the pizza it's very nice Thank you.